So this video is going to give you a bit of an overview of some of the most important principles in genetics. So this is very much an overview. Um, so uh, there will obviously be much more detail of some of these processes, but this is to if you've not done any genetics for a while or you want just a bit of a refresher on how it all works, then that's that's the point of this video. So um, I'm going to introduce you to some important terminology, but also a little bit of mechanism of how genetics works. So two of the most important um, words that you need to know are genotype and phenotype. So genotype is the genetic information that an organism uh, holds. So ultimately it will be uh, the sequence of A's, T's, C's and G's at a particular place in the chromosome. And I'll go through that in a second. So the genotype is the actual genetic sequence that an individual has. And the phenotype is the observable result of that genetic information. So the most obvious one would be human eye colour, for example. So we can see that some people have blue eyes, some people have brown eyes, some people have green eyes. That's a phenotype. That's an observable result of the genes that they have. So uh, someone with blue eyes would have a slightly different genetic sequence to someone with brown eyes, to someone with green eyes. So the genotype is what's actually happening uh, in terms of the genetic sequence and a phenotype is the observable characteristic we use in order to discover that. So if we need to think about the genotype, then we need to think about um, where genes are, which are on chromosomes. So you probably know that uh, humans have 46 chromosomes. Um, and we usually draw chromosomes like this, so they're kind of sausage shaped. So this is a pair of chromosomes. So this might be, you know, chromosome four, for example. Um, and um, humans are what we call diploid, uh, which means they have two copies of each chromosome. Not all organisms are diploid, so you could have tetraploids, which have four copies, you could have hexaploids, uh, which could have six copies, uh, but humans are diploid, and I'm going to stick with diploids because uh, it gets a bit complicated otherwise. So you've got two copies of each chromosome. One of those came from your father, and one of those came from your mother. So we have the maternal and the paternal chromosome. Um, and they are, they should be basically the same length and contain roughly the same things. When we're thinking about genes, there will be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of genes along each chromosome. So each position, uh, if I just start to mark them, each of those different positions would be a different gene. Okay. Um, and what we tend to see is that genes occupy a particular place on the chromosome that we call a locus. So if I put a mark here, for example, so that position there, we would call a locus. That's a place or a position on the chromosome. Um, so we use that to refer to what's going on in any individual position. Mm -hmm. um, and at an individual locus, we might find a gene. OK, so not all loci have genes. Uh, sorry, locus is singular. Uh, loci would be plural. Um, some loci have non-coding uh, sequence there, but some loci have genes. So let's think about what a gene is. Um, well, a gene is something that encodes a functional product within the cell. Um, and genes usually work like this. So we usually cartoonify a gene to be like this. So this is, that's the DNA. And a gene has two bits. It has one bit that we call the open reading frame. Uh, and that actually encodes 
the product, which is usually protein, but in some cases it can be a molecule of RNA. Okay, so the open reading frame encodes the useful thing. And then upstream of that, we have a promoter, which is the regulatory region. So it might act as a switch. So the promoter decides whether a gene is going to be switched on or not. And then the open reading frame is the functional product. So when a gene gets switched on, we have a process that looked like this. So proteins called transcription factors which is usually abbreviated to TF. So a transcription factor would bind somewhere near the promoter and that would recruit a protein called RNA polymerase. Okay, so the RNA polymerase can't bind by itself. It needs a transcription factor to help it bind. And when the RNA polymerase binds, what happens is we have the process of transcription, which makes a molecule of mRNA usually, or it could be uh, a ribosomal RNA, or it could be a transfer RNA. We make a molecule of RNA through the process of transcription. That then gets, uh, if it's an mRNA, that will get translated. So you have the process of translation, uh, which is catalyzed by a ribosome to make a protein. Okay, so it's only mRNAs that end up making proteins. And it's that protein that can again though go and do stuff. So that might be uh, might be an enzyme, it might be a transporter, it could be another transcription factor. So you could have one gene um, encodes a transcription factor that switches on another gene. Okay, so that's the fundamentals of gene expression. Um, so in order for this to all happen, obviously there's quite a lot of different processes. I've got other videos about all the processes. There's quite a few things in the, that need to go to work to have a functional gene with both a promoter and an open reading frame to make a protein that can actually do something. Okay. So, uh, we need to think a little bit about um, hereditary. which is basically, can we predict from the parents of an organism what the uh, child will look like? Uh, and for here, we need to introduce a couple of bit more bits of terminology. So at one locus, we obviously have two copies of a gene. Let's assume we've got a gene at this locus. So you'll have one that you inherited from your mother and one that you inherited from your father. Um, and then we can have three different uh, versions uh, there, okay? If they two, so if both copies the same, we call it homozygous. Okay, so if both copies are the same, uh, so you've got the same thing from your mum and from your dad, you would be homozygous. If both copies are different, they would be heterozygous. Okay, so if you've got a different gene, uh, a different version of the gene from your mom, uh, as you did from your dad, then you would be heterozygous at that. And we use uh, the following sorts of notation. So, uh, so if I just think about my chromosomes, there's my two chromosomes again at that position. There's three different ways that we can notate this. So it might be, uh, so let's start with, we call them both capital A, okay? So capital A uh, means, in this case, uh, I've got a functional copy. So that gene's uh, functional, it works, okay? So it does all of this, it makes a protein. So if you've got a functional copy from your mum and a functional copy from your dad, we call that genotype AA, which would be homozygous dominant 
Okay, so both genes are working, we call that homozygous dominant. You could have a situation, however, where neither gene worked. So that will be homozygous recessive. So that means that you would look a bit different because neither of your genes worked, so you'd have a recessive version. So for example, blue eyes is a recessive trait. So blue is uh, the kind of underlying and brown is the dominant trait. So if your brown eye uh, genes work, then you'll have brown eyes. But if neither of them work, you'll have blue eyes. The other thing that you could be, of course, is if one uh, copy works and one copy doesn't, then you would be heterozygous. Okay. Um, so in this case, you would be, so, uh, so let's say that AA is our brown, because you, but the brown, the enzyme that makes the brown pigment is being made, so you would pick brown. In this case, neither of it works, so you wouldn't make any blue brown pigment, so you'd appear blue. In this case, well, you've still got one copy that works, okay? So if the brown copy still works, you can still make brown pigment, you might not make quite as much of it, but your eyes would appear brown as the phenotype. Okay, so it depends on whether you've got copies that work or don't work as to what your phenotype will be. So we can then make some predictions of what happens if you have a genetic cross. Okay, so, uh, so if we have mum and dad, um, then uh, you will only receive uh, one chromosome from there. So you won't get both of those. Uh, that will be the process of meiosis, and you'll only result with one chromosome. So from your father, you could, if we were thinking about a heterozygous case, you could either get a capital A, a functional copy, or a non-functional copy from your father. From your mother... If your mum is also heterozygous, then you could either get a functional or a non-functional copy from your mum. So what does that mean in terms of uh, the child? Well, there's four different combinations we could have. We could have AA, so cap both capital A's, both are functional, both work. We could have one capital and one lowercase a, so that would be the heterozygous. That first one will be the homozygous dominant. Uh, this version, again, we've got a capital A and a lowercase a, so again, you'd be heterozygous if you had that combination, or you could have two uh, lowercase ones, so that would be the homozygous uh, recessive. So neither copy works, okay? So uh, we can you know, just go through that mathematically and logically. So that means, so those are the four genotypes that we'd have. And we'd have two phenotypes. We'd have three have at least one copy that works. So in our example here, we'd have three that would have brown eyes. Um, so capital A, capital A, that would definitely give you brown because both copies work. Capital A, little a, that's a heterozygous. So you've got one copy, so both, of, so you also make also make the brown pigment. So your homozygous dominant and your heterozygous, they would all have a functional copy. So we'd have three brown, and then we'd have one copy or one uh, progeny. Uh, that was homozygous recessive, so neither copy works, so we'd have one uh, blue. So predictably, we should get a characteristic ratio in the progeny of three quarters of them ought to have brown eyes, so that's their phenotype, and one ought to have blue eyes, um, which is their is, is the recessive phenotype. And that's because they've got different genetics, they've got different sequences, 
So the capital A is the functional copy. All of this works, so we make the protein. The little a is something somewhere in here has gone wrong. So maybe the promoter doesn't work. Maybe um, there's an error in the open reading frame. There's lots and lots of different errors uh, that might uh, be happening uh, that results in you uh, having a different, uh, in having a non-functional copy. So one thing that I should say um, is that different versions of the same gene we refer to as alleles. So that's another really important genetic word. So capital A is one allele, little a is another allele. So in this case, capital A is a version that works and little a is a version, an allele that doesn't work. So hopefully that's given you a reminder of some of the most important things about genetics. As I say, that is a little bit of a whistle-stop tour. There'll be lots of other videos online and on my channel of going through some of that in uh, a little bit more detail, but hopefully that's given you an overview of the most important ideas in genetics.